This meeting is being recorded. So welcome and thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the meeting of the New York City Health and Hospitals Capital Committee. Today's meeting is officially called to order. So for the record, please note Karen San Hilaire is representing Molly Wasso Park in a voting capacity. Also, please note that Sally Hernandez Pinero is participating virtually in a listening capacity. So I would like to propose a motion to adopt the minutes of the Capital Committee meeting held on March 11th, 2024. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. So minutes approved. So next we'll hear the Vice President's reports, Mr. Seitz. Good morning, board members. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so system-wide, we, we are looking ahead to the summer by ensuring our cooling systems are prepared. To that end, we are cleaning and disinfecting our water towers and performing maintenance of our chillers, our air handling units, uh, so that our patients, staff, and community have the best environments possible in the hot months ahead. We received approval from CRC to enter into two contracts to provide preventative maintenance services for our boilers and our generators. Both vendors, Able for Boilers and GenServe for Generators, are the current system-wide contracted vendors and have provided excellent service to date. We have issued several notices to proceed with our construction projects so far in 2024, including NYC uh, Kings County P Building Bridge demolition, uh, demolition, Phase 2 of Kings County Steam Tunnel, the Woodhall Boiler Plant Upgrade, and the Bellevue Anti-Ligature Project. Our teams are working closely with the vendors so that these projects stay on schedule. We have many projects ongoing have completed. At Elmhurst, the Radiation Oncology Suite, Linux CT Simulator was completed and is in use for patients. Woodhall, our Boiler Phase 1 construction project recently started, and the HP Command Center projects is nearing completion. New York City uh, Woodhall Labor and Birthing Suite renovation project will be presenting today is the first of three maternal child health projects funded by the generous capital contribution from our Brooklyn Borough President Reynoso. Similar projects at Kings County and at South Brooklyn are currently in the final stages of procurement and we anticipate bringing these contracts to the board for approval in the upcoming months. We have four items this month, Woodhall Labor and, uh, Labor and Birthing Suite renovation, Central North Central Bronx Type 1 Essential Electrical Systems Project, Kohler Lighting Upgrade in collaboration with NIPA, and the build out of our Gotham Health uh, Health Clinic at Far Rockaway. Any questions? Okay, so let's move to the first. Okay. Uh, first resolution is authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation to execute a contract with Jemco Electrical Contractors to undertake the uh, Essential Electrical Systems ESS, EES work at New York City Health and Hospitals North Central Bronx for a contract amount of $7,625,488 with a 15% contingency of $1,143,824 bringing the total cost to not exceed to $8,769,312. And with that, I'll hand it over to Hiba Hadid, who is our Director of Capital Development at Jacoby. Good morning. Um, so for the program history and background, North NCB, North Central Bronx, currently has all of its uh, emergency electrical services on a single emergency uh, system. The current NFPA code requires three separate distribution branches for category one patient cares. Uh, all emergency circuits on existing distribution panels and downstream panel boards need to be broken down into three essential branches, which is life safety, critical systems and equipment. The new emergency uh, electrical room and associated equipment will need to be provided to accommodate this change. The anticipated scope of work is the construction of a new electrical room, tracing all the existing emergency circuitry, providing new distribution e equipment and automatic a transfer switches, ATSs for major equipment loads, installation of conduits, wiring to relocate existing emergency circuits into the new equipment, transferring the existing loads to new equipment with shutdowns sequence to minimize the hospital's interruptions, Demolitions of existing equipment board once the transfers are completed. Project is expected to begin this summer with a completion expected by summer of 2026 for a total duration of 24 months. Thank you, Eva. Um, good morning. Um, so we posted this project on City Record uh, on February 6th and 7th. We had bid walkthroughs where 13 contractors attended, and on, Mar on February 27th, 
to receive three bids for this particular work. And we narrowed it down to the lowest responsible bid bidder to be Jamco Electric. Um, as mentioned, it was posted on city record as a public bid. The contract amount is 7625488 Jamco is currently one of our jocks vendors, and they were previously on previous pools uh, from 2018 to 2020. All evaluations came back at 84 and 93% respectively, and they also have MOX ratings uh, two excellent and four good. Um, as Hiva mentioned, the project is expected to take 24 months starting this summer. Uh, Jemco has provided WMBE utilization plan of 35%, and there's a list of all the uh, vendors that will be uh, doing all, the, all of the work. The evaluation uh, questionnaire uh, resulted in a good, uh, and the project budget um, it's broken out here, construction 7.6 million with a project contingency of 15% due to the old, uh, due, to, due to the building integrity, uh, and that's about 1.1 million to uh, bring in the total budget to 8.7 million. And there's the resolution. We'll take any questions. Um, any questions? Um, so on this one, we had um, three separate distribution branches, right? We have one, one, and we're, we're separating it out to three. three. Is this an issue in other hospitals too, or? <clears throat> yes, we have we have several EES projects uh, across the across the system at se several different facilities. Mm -hmm. This this is not required by code. Okay, got it. For cats. Okay, okay. Um, so let's take a vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. Resolution approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's move to the second one. Okay. Uh, this is authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals uh, Corporation to execute a design build with Gilbane uh, Building Company, the contractor, to provide a new clinic for Gotham Health in Far Rockaway for a contract amount of $30 million. Uh, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Ted Long. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us today. So I'm joined by Roman, who is our Chief Infrastructure Officer for Gotham. Um, so what we want to do today is to go over um, the needs assessment that defined uh, how we wanted to, why we wanted to open the site here, and then we're going to drill down into the RFP and how we want to set up the design build uh, to build out the site. So to zoom out for a second, um, Gotham Health uh, actually operates closer to 30 locations citywide now with eight currently in Queens. Um, and it just shows the footprint here about where we have our locations in Queens, which show that Gotham Health generally has distribution uh, most parts of Queens, but not all. So we'll go to the next slide. So by way of background, the focus here is on the Far Rockaway community. Um, so the two data sources I want to quickly talk through are the 2022 Community Health Needs Assessment um, conducted by h, &H and then the 2018 DOHMH Community Health Profile for Queens. Um, for the uh, 2022 Community Health Needs Assessment that we conducted here, we found things like um, Queens residents share their top four outcomes, include diabetes, high blood pressure, mental health issues, and obesity. 57% of Queens residents had one or more chronic condition, and cancer and heart disease were leading causes of premature death. It actually aligns very nicely with the 2018 uh, DOHMH Community Health Needs Assessment, where we found that 10% of adults reported going without care that they needed the year before. Um, and even more remarkably, Avoidable hospitalizations were 1,345 per 100,000, which is nearly one-third higher than the rate for the rest of Queens and the rate for all of New York City, a third higher. 15% um, of adults uh, in this area had diabetes. 34% had, had high blood pressure. Uh, these were both substantially higher rates of chronic disease um, than the rest of Queens and the rest of New York City. So when you put those together, higher rates of chronic disease, higher rates of avoidable hospitalization among adults, um, these are leading risk factors uh, for heart disease and stroke, which is what we diagnose and treat in primary care, but the result of a lack of primary care services with people telling us they didn't get the care they needed, us seeing higher rates of chronic disease, us seeing higher rates of avoidable um, hospitalization. The far rockaways, therefore, um, have a higher rate of premature death a lot, mostly along, um, well, first and foremost, along the lines of cardiovascular disease. So the, um, the premise of the Far Rockaway Clinic is to seek to fill this void um, to be able to bring primary care, comprehensive primary care, which we've been successful with um, at all of our other Gotham sites and all of our other h, &H sites, to this community that has told us that they need these services and has shown us that they need these services based on the rates of chronic disease and the outcomes that we're seeing from those higher rates, including avoidable hospitalizations. 
So last, by way of background, the, um, our board of directors <coughs> approved uh, the lease agreement for the space in March of 2023, and we're back today to talk about how we're going to build out the space to create this new clinic, um, which is needed in this community. So to say a couple of words about the clinic itself, um, we want to structure this as we've been successful with the comprehensive primary care model that we've implemented at our three new, for example, COVID centers of excellence and at uh, many of our other Gotham sites, for example, Gotham Health Morrisania, which recently got an award for the best blood pressure control of anywhere um, in New York State. Um, so the comprehensive primary care model that we have here includes adult primary care, pediatric care, OBGYN, dental care, vision care, of course, behavioral health. On imaging care here will include x-ray, mammography, bone density, ultrasound, and even a CT scanning machine. So that whatever you need, once you step through the front door of our clinic there, from behavioral health to needing a CT scan, we can get you all the care that you need right in there in that, in that, in that same building. And if you bring your family, we can treat your whole family. Um, the location is located directly across from Beach 36 train station and three blocks uh, east of uh, the LIRR. Um, it is 22,819 total square feet, um, including 449 square feet for the lobby, giving a grand total of 22, or, and 22,370 square feet for the clinic itself. So now I'm going to transition to talk about uh, the RFP, and I'll turn it back. Thank you, Dr. Long. To Oscar. <laughs> um, so RFP criteria, RFQ, RFP, uh, so we decided uh, as a committee to do this project under a design build. So uh, we set a minimum criteria for design build uh, where the vendors had to have a satisfactory experience in design build and had to have healthcare experience uh, uh, and prove that they have at least five similar projects that are worth over $15 million. They also had to have experience working with the city um, as well as making a commitment to having a WMBE utilization plan. So t this is a two-step process required by the state, so the RFQ um, most of the scoring criteria is really on the firm experience and on the staff to see what teams we're, we're able to, to work with. And at that, that point, we shortlist, and then we do the RFP, where we, all, where we provide the bridging documents over to those three particular vendors, and they put together an approach to the methodology and how they're going to deliver the work, how they're going to continue the design, and how they're going to implement the work. Uh, there's a list of the evaluation committee members that participated in, 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 in the procurement. Um, so next slide shows you the overview of the procurement. The RFP was released on December 7th where uh, it was posted on city record and we invited six uh, specific vendors um, uh, that have design, this type of design build experience. On December 21st we had our pre-proposal conference where 29 vendors were uh, attended and were interested. On, in January, uh, eight uh, proposals were received, for, uh, qualification packages were received. In February, the evaluation committee debriefed and submitted the final scores where we shortlisted the top three firms and the RFP went specifically to those three firms. In March, um, we received the proposals from those three firms and we also held presentations uh, where uh, at, uh, thereafter the evaluation committee debriefed and, and submitted a final score, uh, yielding as uh, Gilbane as the highest rated proposer. So the design build contract calls for uh, $30 million. Um, Gilbane is currently a uh, construction manager in one of our pools. Uh, they've, all, they've done a significant amount of work for us. Uh, they have an excellent score uh, uh, from the work that they did at the Woodhall Roof Project. Um, in addition to that, they have seven, seven scores uh, with, through mocks. Three of them are good, three excellent, and one satisfactory. Um, as mentioned, the project is, is expected to take about two years starting this summer, and we're trying to take advantage of that free rent period uh, with the with the landlord. Um, and they have committed to a 35% MWB utilization plan. And there you have the list of all the vendors uh, and the type of work that they will be doing. Uh, the per, uh, performance evaluation questionnaire uh, is listed as excellent. And the project budget, as mentioned, $30 million. Um, and I'll just read uh, these uh, three bullets here. Our current lease with the building owner allows for two rent-free years to accommodate the space's build-out, commencing with the landlord's complete, uh, uh, excuse me, commencing when the landlord completes their scope of work. So they still have a little, little bit of work that they have to do. Once they finish that work, that's when the clock starts for the two-year period. Uh, seeking contract approval to ensure we can minimize the rent-free period to complete construction and following design best build, uh, excuse me, design build best practices, we'll enter into negotiations with the vendor 
uh, and if those negotiations result in an increase above the approved $30 million, we'll come back to the board for additional approval. And we'll take any questions. Any questions? Yeah. Or cuts, any questions? No questions. Um, I have a few questions that actually Sally sent me, Sally and Nancy Pinero sent me these questions. And, uh, so for the for this clinic far Rockaway ambulatory clinic, where do people get their paramedic care now? Yeah, so we did our, um, the way that we did our analysis is we looked at um, local FQHCs where many people are getting primary care today. Our goal would never be to take somebody that is happy with their relationship with Dr. Katz or myself in their FQHC that they're in, but rather to bring new capacity for the, for example, 10% of people that are telling us that they've had to go without the care that they feel they need in the year prior. And then you see the data um, as well with the higher rates of chronic disease burden and higher rates of avoidable hospitalizations. Primary care is the, the best tool, maybe the only tool, um, to uh, improve people's chronic disease control and to improve their chronic diseases such that they don't need to be admitted to the hospital. So um, our key focus would be those that have been going without, that have told us they've been going without. So I guess a related question is, can we project the number of people that will be using this new clinic? We can. We actually have some of those numbers. I don't remember them off the top of my head, uh, but we can circle back with that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, and then... What is the nature of, the, of our relationship with the landlord, uh, short term or a long term? Are we leasing the land or the building? We are leasing the space within a new development that was that was implemented. Uh, it's a new housing development. Uh, I think a 20, 25 years. 30, lease, year, 30, 30, 30 year lease. Five years. That we have. So it's a long term relationship. Yeah. Thanks. And why was state legislation required to approve the design build program? Would state legislation require to approve the design, approve build, the design program? build program? So the legislation passed in 2019, given us the authority to do design build. So uh, it, it, it it's a little bit involved. You have to have a program. You have to have contracts. You have to have RFQs, RFPs. So a lot of the paperwork and administrative stuff has to be there. But there's also a procedural uh, process where we have to do the two steps. We have to go out to the community and give everybody the opportunity to bid the work. Um, uh, you know, due to the nature of our work, you know, there's very limited experience out there um, because design build is just approved for New York State, but there are plenty of design builders outside of New York State uh, that have this, this level of experience. So um, so we have to qualify the firms first, and then we, we have to give them the opportunity to put together that methodology and approach to, to prove to us that they can actually deliver this work. Thanks. Okay, so let me take it to a vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. Uh, resolution approved. Next one. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next resolution is authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation to execute a design build contract with Suite Group of New York City LLC to undertake a labor and birthing suite renovation at New York City Health and Hospitals Woodhome for a contract amount of $14,816,993 with a 10% contingency of $1,481,699 bringing the total cost not to exceed $16,298,693. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Christina, a.k.a. Kiki, who is our design build lead at Woodhall. Thank you, Dr. Saez. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll start with the background and current state of the project, of the area. New York City Health and Hospitals Woodhall Labor Birthing Suite is a very busy um, in 2020, we had 1,069 births, and it's increasing over 1,300 the past two years. Uh, we had 1,350 in last year, 2023. 95% um, of those births are with the support of midwives. And modifications are needed to improve patient care for both the mom and the baby and to enhance the overall family experience. Labor and birthing suite is approximately 11,000 square feet on the seventh floor of Woodhall. It includes two operating rooms, six labor delivery recovery rooms, support spaces such as nurse station, on-call rooms, clean and sterile rooms. Also on the seventh floor is the birthing triage and the 15 private mom and baby suites. We are currently awaiting sign-off on the renovated NICU space. It's expected to reopen between spring and the summer of 2024. Um, Woodhall is designated Baby Friendly USA. It is an international standard to encourage bonding and breastfeeding. 
now the proposed future state, to modernize New York City Health and Hospitals Woodhall Labor Birthing Suite that is focused on patient and family experience that attains the following benefits. Enlarged OR suite with more equipment, better workflow, uh, new partner robing area, renovated and reorganized recovery area, nurse station, medicine room, better access and visibility for better collaboration with midwifery, nursing, and physician. Upgraded labor birthing recovery rooms with improved patient-oriented environment. The addition of birthing center rooms with birthing tubs for hydrotherapy while laboring. Very excited about that one. Family comfort space to support mothers, partners, and families. More infrastructure to support equipment and controls. A new simulation lab for staff. Additional scope includes a reconfigured and renovated staff room, break room, locker room, bathrooms, and on-call rooms. And the additional scopes um, also included decanting, phasing, while the main construction of the primary suite occurs. The next slide. These are a couple um, concept renderings of exonometric views. So while we studied with the initial architect that helped us with the design build scoping and criteria, we work very closely with the medical teams engineering teams, um, a lot of the staff at the hospital to make sure that we captured all of the needs, um, some wants, and then the procurement. Okay, thank you, Kiki. Um, so RFQ and RFP criteria, again, this is a design build, so we initially just brought the architect to do a bridge in documents, now we're bringing on the design builder to do the full flesh design and, uh, and, and construction. So they have to have a uh, minimum five years of a similar type projects worth over $5 million each uh, and preferred health, uh, preferred experience in healthcare and clinical projects, uh, have to have experience working with the city, have to have, experience, have, to have a WMBE utilization plan, as, a, as mentioned before, two-step process, RFQ to evaluate mainly the firm and the staff experience, so that's where the highest scoring criteria goes. Uh, once uh, the three, top three firms were selected, then we moved ahead to uh, issue the bridging documents along with the RFP. Um, where the, the the majority of the uh, of the score went to the uh, approach and methodology of the project. Uh, there's a list of evaluation committee members that participated in the procurement. And quick overview on the procurement itself. So in September, the RFP was released and posted on city record. In addition, we uh, invited three, six additional vendors. In October, pre-proposal conference uh, was held where 31 vendors were uh, attended. In November, uh, we received six statement of qualifications. Um, and in December, the evaluation committee debriefed and submitted the final scores. In January, the top three firms were selected and the RFP and the bridging documents were released to those three firms. Uh, and also, we conducted walkthroughs. In February, we received the three proposals and uh, we also had rendered presentations where we yielded Sweet Group to be the highest rated proposal. Details on the contract. Uh, contract amount, 14,816,993. Uh, Sweet has experience working with us. Currently, they're working at Bellevue in the uh, Forensics 19 East uh, uh, project as a GC. And they're also working in Queens uh, in the end building fourth floor behavioral, behavioral health renovation. Uh, both projects are going great, and this is an ex excellent um, uh, contractor. The work is expected to take uh, begin this summer, um, and this contract is going to be for a three-year initial term with two one-year renewal options, and they have uh, put together a 36% uh, WMB utilization plan. And there's a list of all the vendors that will be part of that utilization plan. The performance questionnaire evaluation uh, resulted back as an excellent. And the project budget, uh, you have the design build for 14.8 with a contingency of 10%, uh, um, which is about 1.5 million, a total of 16,298,693. Uh, and the asterisk on that contingency, design build proposed price will be negotiated further uh, while working towards contract execution. And we will take any questions. Thank you. Questions? So is the construction going to impact uh, the use of the current space? It had, the work has to be phased and sequenced in a way where there is no uh, interruptions in the services being provided. Okay. So, so you don't expect, you don't expect any 
major disruptions from that. Okay, so let me ask for a vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. All say no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We have one more. Uh, final resolution authorizing <coughs> New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation to execute a customer installation commitment contract with New York City, with New York Power Authority, NIPA, for an amount not to exceed $5,837,585, including a 10% construction contingency of $401,249 for a term of 18 months for the planning, design, procurement, construction, construction management, and project management services necessary for lighting upgrades at New York City Health and Hospitals, COLA. Thank you, Dr. Tayas. Awesome. Um, so this project is an energy efficiency upgrade at Kohler, uh, essentially we're swapping out the light fixtures um, and controls within throughout the hospital. So currently uh, at Kohler, they have T8 and T5 light fixtures that are in inefficient fluorescent light bulbs. Um, due to the lack of automated control, many of the light fixtures stay uh, on uh, during in uh, unoccupied spaces for 24 uh, hours a week. Uh, and 24-7 uh, um, a week. So uh, fluorescent light bulbs needed to replace every 10,000 to 15,000 hours, uh, and they contain toxic materials. So this project will significantly reduce the system's emissions uh, with the GHG reductions of about 460 metric tons. Uh, this will support local law 97. Uh, there will be an annual savings projected of one, nearly 1 1.5 million kilo, kilowatts, uh, equating to the utility cost of savings of about $360,000 a year. Uh, the new LED light fixtures will have about 75,000 hours of uh, lifespan, um, and the light fixtures will, be, uh, will have balanced light levels, creating inviting space for both staff and patients. Uh, the new light uh, bulbs do not contain any mercury, so they will be safe to dispose. Uh, so we'll be replacing a total of about 11,352 uh, light fixtures. Uh, we'll install in vacant and unoccupied uh, areas, and we're also going to be installing daylight lighting controls as needed. Uh, the spaces that experience extended uh, periods will have special dimmers. Next slide shows you kind of what the light fixtures, the old ones look like, and what the new ones look like. Um, and some of the controls as well. So this is, the work is being done through NIPA. So this is through our Encore 3 agreement that we have between ourselves, NIPA, and DCAS, and BOE. Uh, the contract was executed back in uh, January of 2021. So they are doing this as a turnkey solution for us. NIPA has selected McCann DV engineers. They are an NWBE. Uh, they are the, the CM and all of the, their, excuse me, their, um, uh, the procurement was done through uh, the public bidding process. They have also, uh, McCann DV has subcontracted um, uh, direct lighting uh, installers, so we'll be, they'll be working closely with them. Uh, and all project log logistics will be carefully coordinated with the facility management staff. No impact is expected to facility operations as well as patient care during construction. Um, McCann DV is a MWB themselves. Uh, the total contract amount will be for five million eight hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred eighty-five, and the uh, MWB contract for McCann DV will be four million six hundred one thousand seven hundred thirty-nine. The work is expected to take about eighteen months um, in completing in fall of twenty twenty-five. Next slide shows you the project budget, uh, where uh, NIPA management. Uh, and administrative service is about 1.1 million. McCandiva is 4.2 million. Contingency is about 10%. Um, and disposal of hazardous waste is going to be about 50,000. Um, and all of the funding has come through DCAS. So this is a fully funded project by, by them. And that's it. We'll take any questions. Any questions? Dr. Katz, any questions? No questions. No questions. I don't have any questions. So. Uh, so let's take it up for the vote. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed, say no. So resolution approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any old or new business to come before this committee? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.